We've covered a handful of allegedly haunted locations on this channel, but today we're going to get a tad bit more specific. Today we're traveling down to Argentina to talk about some of the terrifying hauntings and strange happenings that take place in their haunted locations. Here are five of the most haunted locations in Argentina. Located in the town of Miramar, province of Cordoba, Argentina, the Grand Hotel Viena is the largest hotel in its town. Construction on the building began in 1941 and was finished in 1947, being completed by German immigrants. Not long after in that same year, due to issues with unions and politics, the hotel closed its doors. They would open again for a short time in 1962, only to close it down again in 1970. Later in 1977, a flood struck the area and families who'd lost their homes began squatting inside the abandoned hotel. Luckily, they were eventually given authorization by the government to stay there. This is when the idea of it being inhabited by something else began. According to the reports given by them at the time, there are at least two spirits who reside there. The first is a former security guard who is known to walk about at night. They say you can hear his boots hitting the ground as he walks, and his keys jingling with every step. His face is adorned with a very clear mustache, and he's reportedly even been captured in tourists' photos. The second supposed spirit is one of a young woman who is believed to have gone missing in the 40s. She, too, has been seen a handful of times. Perhaps the most interesting accounts, however, come from the investigators on the popular show, Ghost Hunters International. The crew of GHI did an entire investigation of the hotel and caught quite a few interesting pieces of evidence. They reported many cases of phantom footsteps, knocking on doors, apparitions, and perhaps the most terrifying of all, the ghost of Adolf Hitler. Given this show's credibility, I would take it with a grain of salt. With that said, though, you can do a bit of investigating on your own. Tours are held at the hotel regularly, and while some are done during the day, night tours, with no light, are also available. Cemeteries by themselves are inherently creepy. Couple that with the legends of something called the Ghost Keeper, a lady in white, and the spirit of a young lady who was taken from the world far too soon, and you have a perfect mix of horror. We are of course referring to the Resoleta Cemetery, located in Buenos Aires, Argentina. The history of this cemetery dates back all the way to the early 18th century. Monks from the Order of the Resoletos arrived around that time, and the cemetery was built around their covent and church. While the order was disbanded in 1822, the garden was converted to the first public cemetery in Buenos Aires. It is quite a large cemetery at 14 acres, and it contains over 4,000 vaults. Yes, vaults. The cemetery isn't filled with headstones and the occasional tomb. Everyone buried here resides in a large vault. Just a handful of the vaults are for soldiers, painters, former presidents, and politicians. With this many deceased residing, you can imagine there are quite a few stories floating around this location. The first story is that of the one referred to as the Ghost Keeper. The legend begins with a man named David Aleno. He was an Italian immigrant who kept watch over the tombs during the night. Tragically, he took his own life at the age of 29 in 1910. According to reports, he'd always said that he'd wished to be buried there, and he was. 
During his time working there, he saved up enough money to purchase a grave plot and even commissioned a sculpture from his hometown of Geneva to sculpture a figure of him. Once all the pieces fell into place, he took his own life. To this day, however, many claim that the keys he wore on his waistband can still be heard jingling through the cemetery at night. Next, we have the tragic story of Rufina Cambaceres. Her vault resides in section 13 of the cemetery and features a statue of her seemingly entering the tomb itself. She seems rather at peace, however, her death was far from peaceful. Rufina's mother would slip her tranquilizers every night so she would sleep. While Rufina was sleeping, her mother would sleep with her partner, who was actually Rufina's boyfriend. As the legend goes, she passed away at the very tragic age of 19 in May of 1902 and was buried in the family tomb only a few days later. In a terrifying turn of events, her coffin was said to be found overturned just a few days later. Legends also claim that she was covered in blood and bruises, leading some to believe she was accidentally buried alive. The more likely the story is that she was a victim of grave robbing. No matter the circumstances, she's said to roam the cemetery at night, possibly looking for her mother, who was said to have unintentionally murdered her. Finally, we have the woman in white, who is believed to be the young woman, Luz Maria Garcia Veloso. She passed away in 1925 when she was only 15 years old. Her tomb features a sculpture of her lying on her deathbed and is close to the main road of the cemetery. The lady in white is believed to be Veloso herself, or her mother who allegedly slept at her daughter's tomb for months on end to deal with the loss. Others believe it to be Rufina, whom we spoke of before. Whoever it may be, locals strongly advise picking up women who are standing on the side of the road near the cemetery. You never know who may get in with you. Located in the province of Rio Negro, Cinco Saltos has quite the history. It was first inhabited back in 1914. However, if you travel down a bit in Cinco Saltos, you'll come across a place known as Baja Negro, where there are allegedly acts of witchcraft committed. Furthermore, there have been multiple sightings of extraterrestrials, UFOs, and a handful of ghostly figures as well. Possibly the most disturbing real event that took place here was in 2009. That year, the corpse of a young girl, believed to be anywhere from 8 to 12 years old, was found. The body was intact and could be dated back to the 1930s. The most horrifying detail is that the young woman was chained to the wall and believed to have been part of an occult ritual. Even in modern day, there have been alleged sightings of figures dressed in dark, black robes performing some type of ritual. However, no hard evidence has come out surrounding this, so it has been placed in the realm of urban legend. Another legend surrounding this location is that of a crying baby. The story is that an infant somehow drowned in the Pellegrini Lake and is known to be heard crying throughout the town. Many believe that it is either confused or seeking salvation. According to legend, this subway line is home to quite a few terrifying events, some of which are more terrifying than what we've talked about so far. The tracks were finished in 1913 and many of the workers passed away while building them. Because of this, it's said that you can see the outline and smudges of anguished, screaming faces appearing on the windows of the train to this day. The subway line is not only site to paranormal horrors, but real life ones as well. In 1953, 40 years after its completion, a group of anti piranists planted a bomb in the Plaza de Mayo station. When it was detonated, it killed six people. Possibly the most horrifying claim here is that of the lonely cadaver. Many have entered the restroom in this location only to run out screaming about a bloody body that seems to have been forgotten about. 
However, no matter how many times this takes place, it will always be gone when others come to investigate. Not much is known about the lonely cadaver, but some believe it to be an individual who took their life in the restroom. Located in the town of Laboca is the Ghost Tower. It's also known as the Castle of Laboca. The large structure was erected in 1910 by Maria Luisa Advert Arnaud. According to reports, she stayed there for quite a few years, importing furnishings from Spain to fill the empty space. However, she abruptly left the castle and lived along the countryside for seemingly no reason. A handful of years later, the building was converted into an apartment complex where a young artist by the name of Clementina began to stay. One day, she invites a photographer into her room to take photos of her art and her workstation. Not long after he left the building, screams were heard from the room and shortly after, the woman seemingly threw herself from the window. She was killed instantly. The photographer was troubled by this and searched for the original owner, Maria. When he was able to get in touch with her, she explained what she believed was taking place there. She alleged that a group of Dundee had come from Spain on the furniture she ordered. In her account, she claimed these Dundee had been terrorizing her and forced her to flee to the countryside. She heavily believed that the photographer's presence upset them and the Dundee were the ones who threw the woman from the window. According to this legend, the photographer went on to develop the photos, and upon reviewing them, he noticed several of these mischievous spirits peeking about, ready to cause havoc. <laughs> 